Hello everybody. Um, welcome to the super cute um, 7x7 mini album we're going to create today. So this is a design team project for Country Craft Creations. So almost everything that you see me using um, will come from Country Craft Creations and all the links will be below the video. Um, there will also be a complete cut list below the video so you can just cut everything and uh, get started. So what I'm using for the album is the Good Old Days collection from Fancy Pants. It's super, super cute. I love it, love it, love it. It's very vintage, kind of vintage, but like a clean vintage. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, but some of the things I've got, I've already got some things cut apart and stuff like that, but, um, these really cute flashcards come with the collection. So there's all kinds of stuff, um, words and there's numbers. Um, so all the, like the letters have coordinating words with them. Just love it, love it, love it. Like this one is super, super cute. And then, um, I also got some twine here and some seam binding, so I love that. So this is one of the cut apart sheets. So there is some three by four cut aparts there and then some uh, four by sixes. So I love that. And then the other side is great lined paper. And then uh, I also got with my design team package, the authentic I'm trying to think exactly what this stuff is called. It's the, um, the Spectrum. I forget every time. So I've got a couple sheets of the Spectrum uh, papers here. Some different colors. So there's dots on one side and lines on the other. And then these are the beautiful papers from the collection. Very, very pretty. I absolutely love it. I love, 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 love this one. I think that's what's going to go, I'm going to put on the cover. So let's get started here. I also did get two sheets of 12 by 12 uh, medium weight chipboard. So I've got everything ready here to do the cover of the album. So we're going to get started on that first. Uh, so we need two sheets that are seven by seven for our medium weight chipboard. And then we need one that's two and a half by seven. And then for the card stock, you need some lightweight. So this is 65 pound weight black card stock uh, and it measures 12 by nine. And I have two sheets of 12 by nine. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my backing here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach these two pieces together, just like that, just right in the middle there. And then I'm going to put down my uh, chipboard. So my spine piece, which is the two and a half by seven, is going to go right in the center of... Okay, and I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac glue to attach these pieces. And I get asked almost every video why I use Fabri-Tac, because it's a fabric glue, um, but the reason that I use it is because it is a very, very nice glue that does not bubble or show through on the other side of my thinner cardstock when I'm doing my covers. So that's why I use it. So I'm gonna use this again here to attach my one of my seven by seven pieces of medium weight chipboard. And I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch of space between my spine piece and my other piece of chipboard, just like this. That just gives my paper somewhere to go and then I'm gonna attach the other one, the same general way. So just leaving about an eighth of an inch of space there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and 
trim off my um, access on both sides here so just leaving about an inch it does not have to be super particular I'm just leaving about an inch there and then I can use those pieces later maybe so next what we're gonna do is attach our tape so I'm gonna attach it to all four sides of my cardstock all the way around and then also all four sides of my chipboard Okay, so I've got all of my tape attached, so I'm just going to give that a quick burnish, just like that. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cardstock and I'm going to gently bring it up, just slowly bring it up and bend it over my chipboard. So now I have folded them all and I've reinforced those folds with my bone folder. So now I'm just going to cut across here. I'm going to cut across all my corners, leaving about an eighth of an inch of paper between the edge and where my cardstock starts. I'm going to do that on all four sides. All right, so I've cut out all my corners. So next I'm going to remove two of my short sides of the backing tape and one of the long sides from the chipboard and then also one from the cardstock, one long side, and I'm just gonna bend it over and just smooth it out to either side. We've got all of our sides down. So now we can just go ahead and smooth that on with our bone folder. And we are just going to go ahead and use the flat end of our bone folder and just push the paper into that crease there. And then that is going to get us our beautiful book cover. So next we are going to put on our spine hider piece. And that piece measures six and three quarters tall by five and a half wide. So we need to attach our tape all over the inside of our spine and then on both sides of the spine. And we've also attached it around all four sides of our spine hider piece. So our book is seven and three, or no, is seven inches tall, but our spine hider piece and our pages are only six and three quarters. So we're not gonna go all the way to the top or the bottom with our tape. Okay, so I've attached the tape in the spine here and on both sides of my of my spine and also on the back of my spine hider piece. And then I just went ahead and burnished it down and removed the 
backings. So now I'm going to center my spine header piece top and bottom and left and right. So just center it as well as you can there onto your paper or onto your book and then give that a good burnish down all over. All right, and then you can just go ahead and kind of lift up one side of it and then just find your spine and bend it in. And then the same thing for the other side, just like this. So now we're gonna attach a pocket to the back inside cover of our book. And our pocket measures seven and seven eighths by three and a half. And on the seven and seven eighths side, you're gonna score it half an inch on both sides. And then on the back, you're also going to attach a piece of score tape at the back to close the pocket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove one side of my backing. And I am gonna just nestle it right nicely down into this corner down here. Just center it as best as you can. And then just press it down over here when it's where you want it. And then I'm just gonna open it up, remove the backing, and remove the backing on the other side. And then just give that a nice press down. Okay, so then we're going to put a little pocket in the corner here uh, to tuck some tags and things into. So what you're gonna need for that is a piece of cardstock that measures four and a half by four and a half. And then you're gonna score it half an inch all the way around um, all four sides. And then what we're gonna do is turn it in our cutter like this and we're gonna cut it from corner to corner. And I'll just cut it and then show you what I mean. So I just cut it from corner to corner and then basically what you get is two equal pieces like this. So what you're gonna do is you're going to fold in your sides Just like so and then we're going to fold this over and cut this off and then fold over this side and cut it off and then at the bottom here you're going to cut across just like that okay and then you would attach your tape to your two sides there so I've already done that with this one so I'm just going to remove the backing from one side of my tape and I'm going to arrange it on here all the way into the corner down here as even as I can get it. And then once I have it where I want it, I'll press down over here. And then I can remove the backing from this little one and then just Fold it down, just like so. All right, and then for the piece that's gonna go on here, you're gonna want to do the same thing with cutting it in your cutter. So for this piece here, I had a whole square that measured three and a quarter by three and a quarter, and then I just put it in my cutter and cut it diagonally down the center just the same way and now I'm just going to take my Fabri-Tac glue and just attach that right on top of there just make sure it's nice and it's got a nice even border all the way around and then my piece of cardstock measures just double check or sorry my piece of pattern paper measures six and five eighths by three and a quarter and you're just going to put your glue on the back here 
whichever side you want. And we are just going to put it right in here. So you're going to tuck it right into that pocket. Try to get it down past that, um, past your little fold line down there. And then just make sure it's nice and evenly in there. If you get any extra glue, just go ahead and rub it off. And then that's that little part covered. And then for the back here, I'm gonna cut a piece that measures six and five eighths again by four and a half because we don't need um, we don't need to go all the way into the pocket. That's just wasting our paper. So I'm just gonna cut that. This is such cute paper. I love it. So this piece measured six and five eighths by four and a half. And I'm just gonna tuck it in here behind my pockets. And again, just make sure it's centered nicely into there, just like so. So I've already done the front inside pocket the exact same way. So now we're gonna start to work on our pages for our book. So the pages are gonna be odd sizes. They're not going to be all the same size. They're going to look like they're kind of stacked, but you'll, you'll see that in the walkthrough before you even start the video. So so for page one, our page is gonna measure seven and a quarter by three and three quarters. And on the seven and a quarter side, you're gonna score it half and then at one inch. So you get that little shape like this that gives us our, our lay flat pages. So this page is gonna kind of have the deconstructed envelope style. So to get the top of our envelope, um, you're gonna need a piece that measures six and a quarter by three inches. And then on the six on the three inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch for our hinge. And you can fold that down. And we can just trim that off, just like so. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you are gonna to wanna to fold in your hinge and mark down one and a half on from between the hinge and here, one and a half. The same thing on the other side, mark down one and a half. And then you're gonna find your center, which is three and an eighth, because our width is six and a quarter. So you're gonna mark at three and an eighth on this side, okay? So then you're going to need a cutting surface, a metal ruler, and a, a knife, a utility knife or whatever you wanna use. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna align our ruler so it goes right across here. So that's how we're gonna get our cut. So you're just gonna go ahead and align your ruler so that it intersects both of those marks. I hope my head wasn't in there, but I'm sorry if it was. And then just cut across. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Just align it and then cut down. And that is going to be the shape that you get. So for the layer that goes on here, you're going to need a piece of your pattern paper that measures two and a quarter by six. And then you're going to mark down from the top uh, one and a quarter on both sides and then find your center, which is three inches. So you're gonna mark down one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and then find your center, which is three inches, and then you're gonna do the same thing. Just line them up and cut across so that it fits in here. So I am gonna, again, just use my Fabri-Tac and just align it in there. And you probably will wanna just pick it up and play with it a little bit just so that it's right where you want it. Looking good. All right, so now we're gonna bring our page in. So our page is gonna go like this and we're gonna put our little envelope top here. 
So just go ahead and remove a little bit of your backing, fold it back, and then we will align the top as best as we can. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and pull out the rest of that backing and just give it a nice fold over there. And then for the bottom of our envelope, you're gonna need a piece that measures three and a half by six and a quarter. And on the three and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch. That'll give us our hinge. And then we'll go ahead and just cut across here. And all that this does is it helps our pattern paper to, our hinges to look nicer under our pattern paper. So that's gonna get attached right here. So again, just remove a bit of your backing. I always like to align the front. So that's why I removed the backing at the back. So just align it to make sure it's not going past your hinge. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing. And then on the inside of our envelope, we're gonna have two little flaps that come in from both sides and we actually don't have to notch these because they'll be completely covered by pattern paper. So you're gonna need two that measure three and a half by three and on the three and a half inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. All right, so then just remove a bit of your backing and then basically these are gonna get centered right on here. So they're not gonna go all the way to the top or the bottom. You're just gonna center them as best as you can in between the top and the bottom and then just remove the rest of that backing and then do the same thing on the other side. So they measure the same. I just removed all my backing because I'm feeling confident. Just got a bit of tape sticking over there. All right, and then just align it again, top and bottom, and then just stick it down like this. All right, so these will come in and this will come up and this will come down. And it's going to have a magnetic closure. So I've got my little basic gray magnets here. So just pop them together. And these can be found in the Country Craft Creation store. There's also the larger size of them. So just pop it kind of where you want it. I don't like to put it too close to either edge because then it's harder to cover with the pattern paper. So just close those up, close those down, make sure everything is nice and straight. And then press down your backing or your magnet. So for the back here, you would just repeat the steps for the front so that you're able to cover that back there. But we'll close that up for now. So for page two, so just the back of the page we just did, you're going to need a piece that measures four and an eighth by six and a quarter. All right, and then on the four and an eighth side, you're gonna score it half an inch and attach your tape. I'm just doing my little angle cuts here. All right, and we're gonna remove a little bit of our backing, making sure I'm the right way here. We're gonna remove a little bit of our backing and we are going to attach this to the bottom of our page. And then once you have it where you want it, just go ahead and press down over here bring out that tape and just attach it down. Now on top of this, over here on top of this flap, we're going to attach another flap. So again, just angle cutting this. So this piece measures three and five eighths by six and a quarter, six and three quarters. And on the six and three quarters side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And we're just gonna remove a little bit of that backing and line it up right on top of our page just like so 
of our flap, sorry. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing so that it would open down and then up. So for the closure, you're gonna need a piece that measures four and a half. So for the closure, you're gonna need a piece that measures four and a quarter by three. And on the four and a quarter side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And I'm just gonna remove a bit of my backing and I'm just gonna kind of put it to, I guess let's put it to the front side. It doesn't really matter how you wanna put it on there. Just like that. And then we're gonna open our flap here and we're gonna bring these guys in and bring it over top for the closure. So again, I'm gonna use a, some basic gray magnets. So I've got my plus and my negative and just pop them together and we'll remove the backing and just put our magnet on there and then remove this backing and just bring it down over top. And then that's our closure for page two. So for page three, you're gonna need a piece that measures seven and a quarter by four and three quarters. And on the seven and a quarter side, you're gonna score it half inch and at one. And then you're gonna attach your score tape, your three eighths score tape to your half inch section there. Um, so we're going to do the same concept that we did for the pocket on our inside and uh, front inside and back covers, except this is three and three quarters. So this piece measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And on all four sides, you're going to score it half an inch and attach your score tape. And then I am just going to cut it apart. And so then we would get two like this. So we can put this one away and save it for something else. But again, we're just gonna bend in those sides and then fold this over and cut across here, just like that. And fold this one over and cut across. And then we are going to cut across the bottom just like that. So that's the piece we'll have. And this is going to get attached over here in this corner, the towards the front of our of our page. All right, so what we're going to do is just again remove one of the backings and we'll line up the bottom first. Just make sure you get it all the way over into the corner and all the way down to the bottom. So I'll make sure I didn't go over on this side. And then remove the backing. And then just bring it down as flat as you can. And then you can always take your bone folder and give it a little extra burnishing there. All right, and then that is actually gonna be it for page three. So page four, so that's the back of page three, we're gonna need one piece that measures six and a quarter by four. And on this or six and a quarter side, you're gonna score it half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, again, just notch my edges. All right, so we're gonna take the backing off halfway and we're gonna attach it all the way to the bottom here. So all the way to the bottom, making sure not to go past your score line, just like so. So then you can remove the rest of that backing. And then you're gonna get another piece that also measures six and a quarter by four. And on the six and a quarter side, you're gonna score half an inch. And you're just gonna go ahead and again, just cut those corners and remove the backing. And this one's gonna get attached all the way up into this corner here, making sure to 
Keep it nice and straight to the top. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and press that down, just like so. All right, so we've got the two flaps attached and we've got a mess of tape. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach two pieces that measure four and a half by four. And on the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score at half an, half an inch for your flap. And you're gonna need two of those. So cut two and then I'm just gonna angle those little corners, just like so. Get that out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna attach one up in this corner here. So again, just remove a bit of your backing and it's gonna go not all the way to my score line, about an eighth of an inch away right there. And then remove that backing. And then this one is gonna go down here in this corner. Again, not all the way to the score line. Leave about an eighth of an inch. Just like so. All right, and then remove the rest of that backing. All right, so now these two are gonna come in. This one is gonna go up and this one will come down. And this is where we're gonna put our magnet right here in this corner. So you're gonna need two magnets, a negative and a positive. I love these sticky backed ones. They make it things so much easier. So just remove your backings. And then I'm gonna stick it like right here in the corner kind of. Bring my side up and then this side down and then just give it a good press and then that closes up that page. All right, so that's page three and four finished. So for page five of our book, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock that measures five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And on the seven and a quarter inch side, you're gonna score at half and at one and attach your score tape to that half inch section back here. So that's your base page. So page five is gonna have an expanding pocket with a window. So for that, you're gonna need a piece that measures seven and three quarters by six. On the seven and three quarter side, you're gonna score at half and at one. Flip it in your scoreboard and score it at half and at one. And then put it in on the six inch side and score it four inches. So you have your four inch section and your two inch section down here, okay? Now for our window, I've already attached my pieces of my strips of pattern paper. There's nothing fancy. I didn't do any angle cuts or anything like that. I just attached them in just like that. This one, there's two that measures five and a half by half an inch. So five and a half by half an inch. And then these two measure half an inch by two and seven eighths. So you're gonna need two that measure half an inch by two and seven eighths and two that measure half an inch by five and a half. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut our frame out all the way around. So I've already done two sides just for the sake of time. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your ruler so it's about a 16th of an inch away from your pattern paper strip and then a 16th of an inch from the top and the bottom so that you get that nice um, black border all the way around. Get up and I'm gonna to try to start about a 16th of an inch down from the top. Cut all the way down till you're about a 16th of an inch from, the, from down here. All right, and then we are going to do the same thing over here. Just line it up so you're about a 16th of an inch down and then start about a 16th of an inch down from here. So just drag it all the way down and make sure you stop before you get all the way to the edge. And then you can lift it up and kind of see where you're at. If you're kind of still connected at a few places, that is where the scissors come in handy. So just go in and clean it up. So just cut up 
And then you can cut up a bit here. And once you've got it all cut out, that's what you'll have. So you've got that nice even black border all the way around. So on the back here, I do want to put a piece of vellum cardstock. So my vellum cardstock measures five and a half by three and three quarters. And it's just going to go right here. So I'm just going to get my th three eighths tape and put it all the way around my frame and on the back just like so just try not to go past it because then it'll stick closed just like this and then down to here and then you can go ahead and just remove your backings from your tape Just like that. Just throw it randomly wherever around you. And then you're just going to put your piece of vellum cardstock right on top. Try to make sure it's nice and flat. You can also use acetate in this case if you don't want to use vellum. That'll work just fine too. All right, and then that's what you have. Super, super cute. So now what we need to do is we need to cut out this section and this section here. So just get your scissors. Cut straight up. And then what I like to do is just do a slight angle here. This is just going to help it to close in much nicer. So again, just cut up to the top and then just, just a very slight angle in like this. Okay, so that's what you should have. So now we can turn it to the back and then when you fold these sides in, fold the mountain valley. So fold, fold it down and then fold it back like this, okay, on both sides. All right, so like I said, both sides are going to want to fold in like that. All right, so I've already attached my little pieces of score tape right here. So take them off. Just like so, bring your sides down, fold them down, and then just bring this up nice and even. And then we can check if there's any overhang, and I do have a tiny bit here. It's all about those little adjustments. All right, and then that gives us our cute expanding pocket. So we're gonna get our page. So it's going to attach to our page over here, just like this. So what we're going to do is get some more score tape and attach it right along here. And I can just put glue down there. So just attach your score tape. Again, make sure nothing's hanging over. We're all nice and neat. And then we'll go ahead and just put glue here. Just like so, all over that section. Before we attach our pockets, we do need to put some pattern paper down on this piece. So your pa pattern paper is going to need to measure five and a half by six. So just going to attach in there just like this. So just get your glue and get it all over the back and attach it down. Perfect. And now you can attach this piece. So just put your glue and then just remove one side of your backing and then I'm just gonna turn my page just so I can see it better and I'm gonna attach it all the way down into the corner of this page here. 
just like so. All right, and then you can remove the backing from this side and then just lay it down. So for the top flap for our expanding pocket, you're gonna need a piece that measures five and three quarters by four and a half. On the four and a half inch side, you're going to score at half an inch to get your little flap here. And then you're going to mark down from your score line two and a half on both sides, mark down two and a half. And then you're going to find your center, which is two and seven eighths. So just go ahead and make that mark. So two and a half down from your score line here, and then two and seven eighths from your center. And then you're just going to, I'll show you guys how to do it an alternate way if you maybe don't have a craft knife. You're just gonna align this point and this point in your cutter. So there's two different ways to do it. And cut across so that you get this. And then you would do the same thing on the other side, align the points and cut across. So you would have this shape, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and attach this to the top of our pocket right here. So just go ahead and remove a bit of the backing. I am gonna just angle my cut here. my flap. So I'm just going to remove the bit of the backing and line it up so that it is lined up with the top of my page. Make sure that it's folded over so that you're you're not going past your score line. Just line it up. And then once it's where you want it, you can go ahead and press that down and press this side down. So now we have to attach our magnetic closure and that's why I haven't put the paper in here yet because that's going to be covering our magnet. So I've got my magnet here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to attach one of the magnets here, okay? And then I'm going to put, snap the other one together and I'm going to close it and kind of see where it would hit under here. So it basically hits right under my flap here. So I'm gonna take it off. It basically hits right under this strip, which is actually perfect for hiding it, but I am gonna hide it with another piece of paper as well. So I'm just gonna close it over and try to see right where to put it under here. All right, so I've got the magnet placed where I want it. So I've got one there and one there. So now I've cut another piece of the same pattern paper that measures four by three and three quarters. And I'm just gonna get my glue on here and slip it in there so that it hides my magnet and covers up the black down here from our, um, the bottom of our pocket. So it looks like one continuous piece of pattern paper now, which is what I want. All right, so then that'll just close up like this. And then for the top part that we have here that's gonna go on as our layer here, this piece measures five and a half by four. And what I've done is I marked down two and a quarter on both sides and then the center of the five and a half is two and three quarters so I marked it at two and three quarters and then I just did the same angle cut so I'm going to glue that on just like so and 
and then that'll just pop right in there with a nice even black border all the way around. Perfect. So that's just gonna go like this. So that's our cute little expanding pocket page. Okay, so for page, I guess this would be six. On the back here, we're gonna do kind of a odd sized waterfall. And we're gonna start at the bottom. So we have a piece that measures four and a half by five and three quarters. On the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch, but we're not going to snip these corners because it's a waterfall. So I'm gonna attach it right here like this. So my little flap is gonna be over here on this side towards my spine, the piece that's gonna attach to my spine. But I'm gonna attach it so it's about, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch up from the top because I need to put my little closure piece there. So I'm gonna remove the whole strip and I'm just gonna line it up down here so that it's right where I want it, leaving that eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna press it down, put it on. So that's attached. Now, before we attach our other two pieces, we need to attach a piece of pattern paper. So my pattern paper here measures two and an eighth by five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my glue on the back. Just like so. And then I'm gonna butt it all the way up against my, uh, the piece we just put down, making sure to leave a little bit of black all the way around the three sides. Just like so. Cute, cute. And then we're gonna attach our next flap. This one measures five by four and a half. And again, on the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And I'm gonna go ahead again and remove my backing and put it right on top of the piece, the flap down here that I just put down. Just center it from side to side because they're not even sized. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and Press that down and remove the backing. Just kind of make sure it's nice in here. And then we'll put our smallest piece on. So this measures three and three quarters by four and a half. And then again on the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And then we're gonna just bring it down again, centered right on top of that one, the one we just did. And then just press it down just like that and then we're going to attach our closure piece so our closure piece measures one and a half by four and a quarter and on the four and a quarter inch side you're going to score it half an inch and i'm just going to remove that whole backing and we will just center it down under here Make sure that it's centered onto our top piece here. Just like this. Okay, so for the closure, I have my little magnets here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the backings from both of them. And I'm just going to put it on my little flap here and close that over just like that so that that closes that up, okay? So that is page six finished. For page seven, you're gonna need a piece that measures seven and a quarter by six and three quarters. On the seven and a quarter inch side, you're gonna score at half inch and at one. So then you again get that shape there. And this side is just gonna have a simple pocket. The pocket measures four by seven and a quarter and I've just scored it half inch on both sides. And we are going to attach a piece of score tape across the bottom. Again, this is three eighths, but you could definitely do it with an eighth of an inch score tape if you want your pocket to be deeper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the back here. 
like this and I'm gonna center my pocket not center but I'm gonna line it with the front of my page all the way to the front so I don't go past my score line and then just open it up and remove the backing from the bottom and the side and then just lay it right back down and then I'm going to attach my pattern paper on top of here and the pattern paper measures six by three and three quarters and I just love this pattern paper it's so cute 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 so that is going to get attached right there look how pretty it just looks like a wood crate I love it so for page eight, we're going to do a large pocket. So the pocket, the pa paper measures seven and a quarter by six. On the seven and a quarter inside, you're going to score a half inch on both sides. And I've attached my score tape and one at the bottom inside. So we're going to use our envelope punch board for this. So I'm going to line up my score line here with the one and a half inch mark. And I'm going to punch and then I'm going to flip it. And again, line up my one and a half inch mark there and punch. So now that we've got it punched, we're just going to put our ruler down and make sure that it is even with both of our dips there. And then we're just going to cut out the center with our craft knife. So now we've got this cute shape. So for the pattern paper, Instead of punching in at one and a half on both sides, I punched in at one and a quarter. And this piece measures six inches by five and three quarters tall. So we are just gonna again line it up like so. And then just cut across. And then it'll layer perfectly into here, but we're not gonna attach this yet because we're going to attach our pocket and then attach our flaps over the top first. So let's get that done first. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the back of my, just like the whole back here. And I'm gonna line up my front and just Line it up in the corner here and all the way towards the bottom. And then I can bring it down over here on this side. Just want to make sure not to go over my score line. And then I'm going to remove that backing. And remove that backing. And then just bring it down nice and flat. Just like so. So now we've got some flaps that are going to come in from both sides. So I've got one that's going to go on top here and it's going to come in from this side. So this one measures six and five eighths by four and a quarter. On the six and five eighths side, you're going to score at half an inch. And I'm just going to remove a bit of that backing, bend it back and put it down right on top of my pocket. Just kind of center it up and down. It can really go anywhere you want on there. So just do that. And then I've got one coming in from the other side that measures four and three quarters by four and a quarter. On the four and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch, attach your tape. And then I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna close this one up just to make sure that they line up. All right, so now I'm gonna attach my magnet. I did run out of my smaller magnets, but that's completely okay. So these are my larger basic gray magnets. So they also have the backing on them, but I've just uh, removed the backing. So that is our little closure for this page. So now we can go ahead and attach our pattern paper. I was having a hard time deciding which side of this one to use because I do love both sides. But then I decided to use the red because I really love the 
very, very earthy red in this collection. All right, so that covers that up. And then we close it up with our magnet. Okay, let's go ahead and get our pages attached into the book. So this is our largest page and it's gonna go all the way at the back of the book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my tape and I'm going to align this flap here with my score line back here, okay? So I'm just gonna take off a bit of the backing, not all of it, and I'm gonna bend it back so I can remove it and I'm just gonna make sure my page is centered nicely top and bottom. So then once I have it where I want it, I can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing, just like that, and attach my page down, okay? And then what I'm gonna do with my second page is just go ahead and basically butt it up against this one, but I'm gonna align them evenly to the bottom so my gap is gonna be up here, but my bottom is where it's going to be aligned. So just take off a bit of that backing and I think I'll just lay it flat and then just align it with the bottom of this page so that they're nice and even to each other. Just like that, and then I can remove the rest of my backing, and then we'll take the next page. So I did, um, I switched these so that this is now page three and this is page four, but you can do it however. It just happened to be how my hinge was aligned, if that makes any sense at all. So then again, we're just gonna lend them up I'm going to line it up evenly to the bottom. And then once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and remove the rest of your backing. Lay it down, just like so. And then I will attach the final page up here. So again, just aligned with the bottom. So remove the backing. I'm just going to remove a bit of it. And again, just line it right up with the bottom there. And press it down. And then I can go ahead and remove the rest of my backing, just like so. All right. So that is all my cute little pages attached in. Loving it, loving it. And it's got that really great profile from the top. Really, really cute. So now I'm just gonna go through and just finish covering my pages. And I'm going to just attach some, or just put some inserts in. Um, just make it super cute with that really, really cute paper. And then you guys will see the finished book in the walkthrough. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's kind of different looking and I love that about it. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the walkthrough. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. All right, guys, I'll see you in the walkthrough.